People often blame scientists for conducting seemingly pointless experiments. For instance, what's the use of growing potatoes in a vacuum when thousands of hectares of fertile land are available? But scientists are doing invaluable work, which might not be immediately apparent. Today, we'll take a seemingly harmless example to refute this and prove that every research has a purpose if only humanity is ready to understand it. Our guests today are capuchin monkeys, generally considered one of the least intelligent and unremarkable primate species. Capuchins rarely grow taller than half a meter, and their tiny brains are mainly focused on two things, food and sex. It would seem there's no scientific interest in them except to debunk the myth that labor turned monkeys into humans. However, However, scientists have easily trained capuchins to perform various tasks in exchange for food and even money, which they can use to buy whatever they want. Still, no improvements are observed. Capuchins continue to use their earnings solely for food and finding a mate, showing no signs of intelligence. Yet capuchins have helped insightful people understand a problem plaguing the rational world, the issue of fairness. Let's start with a real-world example. In 2003, Richard Grasso, chairman of the New York Stock exchange received a hundred and forty million dollar salary the board of directors claimed he deserved every cent as he restored the exchange's operations after 9-11 conducted successful deals and increased its capitalization moreover grasso was never involved in financial scams kickbacks or illegal operations typical of this business instead richard was maximally honest and the money paid to him was just a fraction of the profits he earned from selling shares it seems fair right however new yorkers were horrified by his enormous salary while they worked for pennies. The backlash was so strong that Grasso had to return the money and the exchange had to apologize. A paradoxical situation arose where a person was fired and had his salary taken away for being too good at his job. Proportionally, he received a fair salary, but people believed he exerted the same physical and moral effort as an ordinary barista in a cafe. Yet he received a million times more for his labor. Scientists and psychologists have written dozens of dissertations on this topic. Some claimed the problem was envy, others thought it was a flaw in the capitalist system. Then, Capuchins took center stage in a simple experiment, led by renowned primatologist Franz de Waal. Two familiar Capuchins were put in a transparent cage and had to perform a simple task. Take a stone from one compartment and hand it to a person through another. When both monkeys received cucumbers for the transferred stones, there was no problem. They were happy and ate. But later, the scientists scientists changed the rules. The first monkey continued to receive a cucumber for its work, while the second started receiving grapes. When the first monkey saw this, it reacted angrily, throwing away the cucumber and shaking the cage in frustration. Later, it refused to work, knowing it would only get a cucumber. Although a cucumber is a good reward, the capuchin saw monstrous injustice for the same work its neighbor was eating grapes. Now the monkey was ready to completely refuse the less tasty reward. What does this demonstrate, at the very least, our biologically close primates are also familiar with the feeling of fairness. But the researchers from the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology went further. In the described experiment, a person distributed the food so the monkeys saw who was to blame. The scientists replaced the worker with a mechanism, and guess what happened? The monkey given a cucumber refused it only in 2% of cases. In the absence of a person to show displeasure to, capuchins became much more compliant and endured injustice. Feel the analogy with the real world? The powerful like to concoct stories about unattainable enemies because of which people receive an unfair reward for their labor. In such cases, not only capuchins but also ordinary people reconcile with injustice. However, if given another person, they will gladly express all their feelings, and then someone will say that we have come far from monkeys. Returning to science, we can continue with experiments on humans. There's a game called the Ultimatum Game. Two participants are chosen. One is given money to divide, and they decide the proportions and make an offer. The other person either agrees with the proposed percentage or does not. If they agree, both get the money. If not, neither does. Imagine a situation with $10. A typical person would keep nine and offer one to their partner. The logic is simple. Otherwise, the second person might end up with nothing. But the experiment showed otherwise. People refused low shares, and the most frequent division was 60-40. 
turns out that the person with the money was guided by fear of losing profit, while the receiver was guided by a sense of fairness. They were ready to stay without money just to leave the other person without money as well. However, as the experiment developed, the situation dramatically changed. The scientists pretended to stop randomly choosing the person dividing the money. They invented pointless competitions like who has longer hair, creating an arbitrary winner whom people perceived as legitimate. In this case, the receiver accepted even one dollar as the minimal stake. This is a key moment. As we approach decoding the experiment with capuchins and the problem of the U.S. stock exchange, people are willing to tolerate injustice, but only if there is some rationale when they see the earnings of another as logical, no problems arise, or when they simply have no one to express their anger to. The 140 million income of Richard Grasso seemed too provocative to people and broke their logical barriers, as there was someone to voice their grievances to. The media in the U.S. loves to pick up on provocative topics. However, in third world countries where people have no one to express their complaints to, they are like capuchins from the experiment, eating cucumbers and helplessly looking at their neighbor's grapes. But in the presence of a mechanism for fairness, we, like monkeys, are ready to forego everything to punish, in our opinion, the villain. This is the astonishing conclusion from a seemingly harmless experiment. If you want to see more, let us know in the comments. That's all for now. Until next time, friends.